don't pick that life, that life picks you. Welcome to Sit Down News, and before I begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Ratchet is a clothing company from the UK, started by a young man with a vision, a dream, and determination. They have various prints and styles for men, women, and children. I'll include a link to their website down below in the description for this video. All right, how's everybody doing? Today we're gonna to be talking about how the old school minds in the mob felt about sex. Obviously there was no rule against sex, but the old timers didn't approve of certain things. But first we'll go over a little history. There are many references of members of the mob who were involved in pornography. I'll just mention a few. The mob's always been involved with sex as a money-making opportunity. In 1936, Lucky Luciano and others were targeted to centralize control over the brothels in New York City. On June 5, 1936, Luciano was convicted on prostitution charges and he was sentenced 30 to 50 years in prison. Joe Profaci of the Profaci family, which later became the Colombo family, and his brother Salvatore were involved in the pornographic industry. During the 60s, the Colombo family ran coin-operated machines showing pornography firms. And in 1972, a film called Deep Throat was supposedly financed by a Colombo member named Anthony Periano. Westside captain Matty the Horse Ionello owned several topless bars, porn shops, as well as sex shows on Times Square. Banano captain Mickey Zaffirino owned Pussycat Cinemas, a movie theater chain specializing in porn. In 1980, the government handed down 45 pornography indictments, which included members of organized crime. During that time, 85% of the porn industry was controlled by the mob. Gambino member Robert DiBernardo became a major supplier in the adult industry. DiBernardo, who met often with Paul Castellano, boss of the Gambino family, was caught on an FBI bug mocking his boss, basically saying that Castellano looked down on him. Even though he knew the money was coming from pornography, that never stopped Castellano from accepting the money. Since the 30s, Times Square has been known as the CD section in New York City. In 1965, there were nine known adult entertainment businesses in Times Square. But by 1993, that number increased to 177. In 1998, as mayor of New York City, Rudolph Giuliani won a legal battle to have Times Square rezoned. Adult entertainment and businesses were banned. The old timers didn't like talking about sex. I remember my mother's Uncle Angelo, who I also called Uncle Angelo, was close to the Fatico brothers. In proper Italian, their last name would be pronounced Fatico. And their nicknames were Charlie and Danny Wagons. Both brothers were members of the Gambino family. Angelo one day told me, don't talk about the things you may do with your girl to your friends. He said, because when they're in her company, you don't want any thoughts going through their mind about her. I never forgot that advice he gave me and I always followed it in my life. Which brings me to a story I remembered and why I decided to do this video. At the time, Ernie Grillo and I were in Fishkill Correction Facility. Presently, Ernie's a captain with the Gambino family. One day, a guy named Joey Patillo came in on a parole violation. Joey had been convicted in 1985 for a manslaughter. He was a downtown Brooklyn guy who was associated to the Colombo family. In particular, he was an associate of Wild Bill Cattulo's crew. In fact, Joey turned down becoming an inducted member. Wild Bill was a captain and former underboss for the Colombo crime family. Anyway, one day, Joey was showing Ernie and I some pictures he had sent in. There were pictures of Wild Bill and his crew, but most of the pictures was from a New Orleans trip that Joey took during Mardi Gras. Most of the pictures were of women, and he told us that there was a stack that the prison didn't let in that were of him and his friends having sex with these women. And as he told us about these pictures, he was laughing. He said, I was in Bill's club one day showing the pictures to all the guys, and in one of the pictures he was performing conolingus on a woman. He said while Bill walked over to see what everyone was looking at. He said when he looked down and seen what the pictures were, he got so angry with Joey that he pulled him to the side and gave him a tongue lash. Wild Bill had an old timer mentality, and to him those pictures were disrespectful. They no longer make them like Wild Bill Cthulhu or the old timers of the past. Unfortunately, today in that life, anything goes. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.